Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Diligent Dev, and welcome to part two of my Vue.js form validation series. In part one, we looked at a package called vValidate, and in part two, we're gonna look at another package called Vulidate. So let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer, and what I have up right now is the project that I created in the first part of this two-part series over view form validation, where we covered vValidate. If you're interested in learning more about vValidate, I will leave a link in the description and also throw one up on the screen right now. So all I've done is commented all the vValidate stuff out, and what we're gonna do is focus on vualidate for this video. So I've created a component in the components folder and called it vualidate form. And all we have in here is an H2, which you see up on the screen right now. And what I did was I imported it into our app.view, registered it as a component, and then injected it into the template. And the next thing we need to do is get Vulidate into our project. So let's go ahead and head over to their documentation. And we'll click this getting started. And you'll see that it is installable using NPM. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this out of here. I'm going to go back to my project, open up a new terminal and paste that in and run it. Once this is done, I will be right back. And now that it's installed, let's go ahead and look at how we can get it into our project. So we'll go back to their documentation and you'll see they have some basic usage down here. And in our main.js, we're gonna go ahead and import it as a plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two lines, head back to our project, go to src main.js, and right underneath the vValidate stuff, I'll go ahead and paste that in and hit save. Ignore these squiggly lines, they just think it's a misspelled word. And now that we have it in the project, let's go ahead and go back to their documentation and look at some basic usage here. So we'll go to basic form, and you'll see that what we need to do is we need to import the rules that they have inside of Vulidate from this exact path in the npm package. And then what you'll notice here is that we have our data property and these would be our V model form values. And then below that we have some validation and this is something that is provided by Vulidate. You'll see that the validations are named exactly like our model properties and then you're going to specify which rules you want on those validations. Then if we go ahead and look at the HTML, you'll see that all we need to do is check to see if any of these rules are false. So if name was required and it's not there, then we display this error below our form values. And if min length was not valid, then we'd go ahead and display a different error underneath of our form inputs. And then to have this fire on form submission, we'll go ahead and check out what we need to do. So you'll see that they have their form model properties, the rules that they need, then they have their validations, then they have the submit function. And you'll see that the way that they fire validations is saying this dot dollar sign V dot touch. And then they're going to check to see if the form is valid. And if it's not, then they're gonna go ahead and display a message of error. And if it is, then they're gonna go ahead and submit it. And if we scroll down and look at their errors, we're gonna do things a little bit differently because we need to check to see if they're dirty before we display any type of validation. We need to check that each field has been marked as dirty, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And we're gonna handle things a little bit differently than what they're doing, but it'll give you a good idea right now of what we need to do to accomplish that. So let's head back over to our project and go to our Vulidate form. The first thing we're gonna need is the model for our form. So let's go ahead and make a data property. And inside of here, we're going to have a name inside of our form. So we'll make a name property, email, password, gender, and accept terms. And then we're gonna import our rules. So what I'm gonna do is go back to their documentation and we're gonna find this line right here where we import some of the rules. We're gonna copy that, come back here and paste it at the top of our script tag. And then we're going to import a few more rules. We're going to import max length, alpha, 
and email, in addition to the required and min link that we went ahead and copy and pasted in. Then below our data property, I'm gonna make another property called validations. And this is given to us by default by Vuladate. And what we're gonna do is go through and make validation rules for each one of our data properties. So we'll say name, and we're going to make this required and alpha. Then we'll do email, and we're going to make this required and email. Then we'll do password. We'll also make this required. We'll give it a max length rule. And we'll set that to max length of 12. We'll give it a min length rule. And set that to min length of 6. For gender, we're just going to make it required. And for accept terms, we'll also just make that required. While we're down here underneath our validations, I'm going to make a methods property. And this is a method that we're going to use to submit the form. So we'll just call it submit form. The first thing we're gonna do is fire all the validations. So we'll say this dot dollar sign V dot touch. We'll dollar sign touch. And then below that we'll say if this dot dollar sign V dot dollar sign invalid. So if invalid is false, then we're gonna console log our form variables. So I'll do some back ticks so we can do some string interpolation. We'll say name and we'll set that equal to this.name. email, this.email, password, this.password, gender, this.gender, and accept terms and lastly set that to this dot accept terms i'm going to do alt shift f to format this and now we can finally start coding out the form now in the form we're going to be using some bootstrap styles and what i did in app dot view under the style tag i did an import of the bootstrap cdn so we'll go back to our Vuladate form. We'll go up to the template and we will make a form tag. We're gonna get rid of action and we're going to bind to submit and do submit.prevent to prevent the default form submission. Inside of here, we will reference our submit form method that we declared in our methods property below. The first thing we're gonna have is an input for name. So we're gonna do a div with a class of form group. Inside of this, we'll have an input with a class of form control. And we're going to have a type of text and a V model equal to name. Below it, we're gonna display the error. So we'll do a span with a class of text danger. On the span, we're going to do a V if. So we're gonna say V if, and we'll say exclamation point, dollar sign v dot name dot required. So if the name is not there, we want to show this error, but we're also going to do an and also dollar sign v dot name dollar sign dirty. So what this will do is it'll prevent the form from showing these validations until, until the field has been marked as dirty. So inside of our span, let's give it some text and say, name is required i'm going to do alt shift f to format this i'm going to go ahead and close this down so we get a better look at it and so we have our inputs 
and if it is required and it's marked as dirty, our validation should fire. So let's go ahead and save this. And I need to reload. We see now we have our input and for our input, let's put a label on it and give it text of name and we're just gonna delete the four off of it. And we see we have our name input. And the next thing we need to do is display another error if any of the characters inside of name are not an alpha character. So what I'm gonna do is copy this span and we're going to paste right below it. And all we're gonna do is change required to alpha. So this will fire if there is another character except an alpha character, and this one will fire if name is required. So the next input we're gonna do is email. And in order to do that, all I'm gonna do is copy and paste the name one that we've created and put it below. We're going to change the label to email. We're going to change the V model to email. We'll also change the type to email. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of one of these errors. And then inside of our VF, I'm going to wrap this inside of parentheses. And you'll see what I'm about to do. And then we're gonna say v.email, if v.email is required, or dollar sign v.email dot email. So if it is required or it is not a valid email and also it is dirty, we're going to display an error of valid email is required. So we'll go ahead and save that and you'll see now we have our email input. The next field we're gonna do is the password. So let's go ahead and just copy this and paste it below. We will change the label to password. We'll change the input to a type of password, the V model to password, and we'll go ahead and start working on our errors. So below here, we're going to get rid of everything to here and there, and we're going to change this to password, and we'll also change this to password. And one thing I missed up here is on the end also, we need to change this to email. So this one's going to check to see if the password is required and it is also dirty. And we will change the message to say, password is required. Now what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this. And we're going to put another error for our min and max length. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift F to format everything. We're gonna go ahead and copy this span right here and paste it below. And we're going to wrap this in parentheses again because we're going to check if password.minLength is false or else we're gonna copy this and paste it on the other side and change this to max length. Inside of our error, we're going to say password must be between and we can actually reference the length that we specified in the rule. So we'll say dollar sign V dot password dot dollar sign params dot min length dot min and that will give us the min that we specified in the rules and then the other side of this we'll say and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it on the other side and instead we'll say max length and max and characters We'll go ahead and save that and hit Alt Shift F to format it. And now we have our password field all set up. Next, we're going to do our gender. So I'm gonna make a div with a class of form group. Give it a label of gender. We're gonna do a select and give it a class of form control. We're gonna delete the name and ID, but we will put a V model on this of uh, gender. Inside of our select, we're gonna have to give it some options. We'll give it male as the value on the first one and male as the text. We'll go ahead and copy this and paste it a couple times. Do female and other. And also update the text on those. We'll go ahead and go up here and copy this span and paste it right underneath the select. And we're gonna change password to gender, 
to check that it, if, that it is required and that gender is also dirty. And then we're just gonna say gender is required. And we'll go ahead and save that. The next thing we're gonna do is make our checkbox. So I'm gonna do a div with a class of form check, give it an input with a class of form check input. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift F to format this a little bit. We're gonna give it a V model of accept terms. Then we're gonna do a label and give it a class of form check label and give it some text of accept terms. I'm gonna go up to this and grab the span and copy it. We're gonna come back and underneath this label, we're just going to, actually we're gonna do it underneath this div. We're just gonna say accept terms. So we're gonna check that it's required. We're also gonna check that it is dirty. And then we will give this span some text of accept terms is required. I'll go ahead and save that. And actually it gave the input a type of text. So we're gonna just change this to checkbox and hit save. And we see now we have our accept terms checkbox. The last thing we need to do right underneath our form check is put a submit button. So we're gonna say input type will be submit. And we're just gonna go ahead and save that. And we see now we have a submit button. Let's give it some styling. So we'll say class equals btn, btn, btn primary. Save that. And it looks like we need to give it a little bit of margin top here to get it away from the checkbox. And you'll see now we have our form all set up. So what should happen, as long as there's no bugs, is when I hit the submit button, it should fire all of our validations for all of these fields. So we're gonna hit that. And we'll see this except terms is a little off. Everything else looks okay. It looks like we're getting two password requires. So on the input, I'm gonna put a break and that should fix the except terms. And then let's go see why our password required is showing twice here. And it's because I have it in here twice. So let's go ahead and delete one of them out and hit save and we'll hit submit again. And we see now all of our validations are firing and they all look correct. But let's go ahead and go through the form and fill it out to see if they go away. So let's just put Rob in there and that goes away. We'll put ASDF at ASDF. And you'll see that valid email is still showing because we need to give it a valid domain or something that looks like a valid domain. We'll do a password. And it doesn't look like password is working, so let's scroll down a little bit and you'll see I misspelled it here. So let's go ahead and spell it correctly and hit save. Let's fire our validations again and I'll fill this out really quickly. We're back down to the password and now you'll see once the required is gone, it's telling me it needs to be between six and 12. We've hit six, let's go to 12 and beyond and we see we get our error again. So we'll go ahead and delete those out. We'll go ahead and pick a gender and accept the terms. And then I'm gonna open up the console. We'll go ahead and clear everything out of here. We'll hit submit. And you'll see that we have all of our fields being displayed except for passwords. So let's go down and figure out exactly what was occurring there. And it's because I had misspelled it. I'll fill this out one more time really quickly. Go ahead and go to the console. We'll clear everything from the console and I will hit submit. And you'll see now we get all of our fields returned and all of the validations are firing correctly. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this tutorial. If you got any value out of this, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and encourages me to make more videos just like this one. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, go ahead and drop a line in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.